Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I wanted to go over additional practice problems in section 5-2, binomial distribution. So in problem number four here, uh, it says, assume that a procedure yields a binomial distribution, determine the probability given the number of trials and the probability of success, and round your answers to four decimal places. Uh, so we're given that this is a binomial distribution uh, we're given the number of trials. In this problem, it's 18, and the probability of success is 0 0.62. And then we have a series of problems that we want to solve. So in problem A, uh, we're asked to find P11. So this notation means the probability of 11. So the probability that we get exactly 11. Uh, so first of all, because we're, we're given that it's a binomial distribution and we're, we're trying to find probability, uh, we know we're going to use one of two functions, right? We're going to either use binum PDF or binum CDF. So the binum PDF is used when you're trying to calculate the probability of exactly one outcome, right? And then the CDF is used when you're trying to calculate the probability of uh, more than one. Um, so in other words, and, and, and what it calculates is it's going to calculate the probability of a value and less, right? A value or less. Okay, so uh, in this situation, we have n equals 18. So essentially what, what we get there is that uh, the, the, possible num the possible outcomes are either 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, and so on, right? Dot, 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 uh, 16, 17, 18. Uh, so let's let's pretend that the context of this problem was like um, the probability that someone's going to vote for a certain candidate, right? Uh, out of 18 randomly selected people, this is the probability that they're going to vote for a certain candidate for president or whatever, right? Um, so out of 18 possible, um, 18 randomly selected people. Well, you can get no person voting for that uh, for that candidate, or and or all the way up into 18 people voting for that candidate, right? So that that's what these are: the possible number of outcomes, uh, the 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 possible outcomes for the situation. And for A, we're calculating the probability of that exactly 11 out of the 18 people uh, vote for that person, or whatever. And again, we're just pretending that that's the context of the problem, right? So whenever we're looking for the probability of exactly a number, so in this case exactly 11, we know we're going to use binum PDF. So 11 is somewhere over here. So anytime we're looking for the probability of exactly just one outcome for a binomial distribution, we know we're going to use binum PDF. Okay, so uh, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to press second vars, and then we're going to go to binum PDF. So trials is 18, P is 0 0.62, X is 11, and we're going to paste. So if you have a TI-83 plus or an, an older 84, you're going to have to input it just like this with um, N comma P comma 11. So your output is going to be a little bit different from Mars, um, but that's how you would do it. All right, so press enter. So the answer here would be, again, rounded to four decimal places, would be 0 0.1895. All right, so let's take a look at number two, or, or question B, rather. So question B says, uh, find the probability of at most four. So at most four. So we're looking for the probability of at most four. So first of all, you have to know what at most four means, right? So at most four means four or less, right? Uh, so at most four means four or less. And so we know that uh, four or less, four or less is four and to the left, right? Either four, it's four or three or two or one or zero. So for a problem like that, we know we're gonna calculate using binum CDF. And again, PDF is when you're trying to calculate exactly uh, one, exactly X, and CDF is where you're calculating, it's gonna calculate X or less. 
Okay, so in this case, uh, we're trying to calculate four or less. So we're going to use binum CDF. So we're going to go press second vars, and we're going to press. We're going to go to binum CDF. Number of trials is 18. <clears throat> Probability of success 0.62. X is four, right? So the way that binum CDF is is programmed is um, whatever input you put here, whatever value you put here, it's going to calculate the probability of that number or below. So in this case, we want four or below, which is a, which it will calculate directly. And we're going to paste, press enter. And we get this notation. Again, this notation with the e to the negative four. Uh, this is scientific, scientific notation. And what we're going to do there is we're going to move this decimal point four times to the left. So if we do that, so if we do that, we have okay. So we have 7.006 dot 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 dot, right? So we're going to move this decimal point four times to the left. So we're going to get one, two, three, four, and with each empty waves, there's a placeholder. We're going to put in a zero for the placeholder, right? So if we round to four decimal places, so the seven is in the de fourth decimal place, we're going to get approximately 0 0.0007. Okay, so moving right along, so let's do uh, question C. So question C says uh, the probability of at least six. So the probability of at least six. So what does at least six mean? So at least six means six or more, right? At least six means six or more. Uh, so we have, let's see, 5, and then 6, and then 7, dot, dot, dot. So at least 6 means 6 or above, right? 6 or more. So 6 to the right. Um, and so you might be saying, well, which one am I going to use, right? Am I going to use binum PDF or binum CDF? Well, anytime you're calculating the probability of an, um, more than one thing, right, as opposed to exactly one thing, so this is more than one thing because we're shading uh, six and beyond, right? More that's more than one thing. You're going to use binum CDF. Okay, so if we go to binum CDF, so we have 18 is in uh, 0.62. So the issue here is we can't do, we cannot put six here, or we can't put a value here that's going to calculate the what we want. At least six means six or above. But the problem with binum CDF is um, whatever value we put here, it's going to calculate the probability of that number or below. But we want a number and above. So we can't use it directly. So what we're going to do instead, so anytime you're trying to calculate a probability of a number or above with binum for binomial distribution, you need to calculate the complement. So we're going to calculate the complement. Okay, so once we get the complement, then we're going to subtract from one. So pretty much what we're doing here is uh, we're doing we're going to do one minus the probability of five or less. And essentially, what that is is it's our rule, it's our complementary probability rule, right? The probability of a is equal to one minus the probability of a complement. That's exactly what this is. So at least six and less five or less. Are complements of each other, and that's what we're we're finding here. So this answer right here, this this value here, is is actually the answer for that. So what we need to do is we need to do one minus, go up here, and copy and paste. So do one minus that to get that answer. So that is the correct answer that we're looking for. So rounded to four decimal places, this is approximately uh, 0.9966. So 0.9966. Okay, and then question D. Uh, question D. I'll let you guys work it out independently, but I just I'll just talk about it. So it says the probability of less than seven. So less than seven does not include seven. That's going to it's going to be six or less, right? So less than seven is six or less. And now just think about it. We know that this is not uh, this is the probability of more than one outcome, right? So we're going to use binum CDF, and for this one, we do not need to use we do not need to do the one minus because binum CDF can calculate this directly, right? Binum CDF um, it calculates the probability of a number or less, so we don't need to do the minus one because 
it calculates it directly. Okay. Number five. <clears throat> so number five, we have uh, it says assume that a procedure yields a binomial distribution. Given the number of trials and the probability of success, determine whether each value is significant. So it's either it's significantly high, significantly low, right? And further, it says a value is significant if the probability is less than or equal to 0 0.05. So here's n, here's p, and for a, we're trying to determine whether 16 is significantly high by finding its probability. All right, so um, whenever you're trying to calculate the pro whether something is significantly high, uh, you have to calculate the probability of that number or more. So I'll take you guys to the note where it says that. So this part of the notes uh, on page 3, or this table right here, uh, tells you that a value is for to calculate whether something is significantly high, you have to calculate the probability of that number or higher. And if the probability is less than or equal to 0 0.05, then it's significantly high. Um, similarly, to determine whether something is significantly low, the difference here is you're, you're going to calculate the probability of that number or lower. And if the probability is less than or equal to 0 0.05, then um, it's significantly low. So again, it's not a mistake. The, the, the less than or equal to in both of the situations here is not, it is not a mistake. So it is correct. Now the, the difference between the sig low and sig high is how you're going to calculate the probability, right? Okay, so coming back to our problem, because we're trying to determine whether 16 is significantly high, we're going to calculate the probability of 16 or more, 16 or higher, um, using, uh, and we're given that as a binomial distribution. So 16 or more. So again, let me kind of draw out um, the the outcome. So the outcomes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 um, 20, 21, 22, right? And we're calculating the probability that uh, of 16 or more. So 16, 17, and to the right. So 16 to the right. <clears throat> Okay, so we know we're going to use binum CDF, but we also know because we're calculating the probability of a number or more, we need to do 1 minus the probability of the complement. So the complement of 16 or more is 15 or less. So 15 or less is the other side, right? So we have to calculate that first, 15 or less. Okay, so let's go to the calculator. So we're going to go second vars, binum CDF. A number of trials is 22. Uh, probability of success is 0.48. And the x value is, uh, again, we're, we're calculating the green, right? What's in the green here. So that's going to be 15 or less. But we know that's not our answer. We need to subtract from 1. So we're going to go 1 minus. And I can go up here and highlight and then paste, or I can just, you know, just type it in. And it's usually a good idea. You can type the whole entire thing, or it's always a good idea to go as f many digits as possible. But usually five or six or, or seven digits is fine. So just up to here, it's fine. I can type in the rest of them, but that's okay. So I'm going to round my answer to four decimal places. So the probability is 0 0.0167. And uh, take note, this is less than or equal to 0 0.05, which, which means because the probability is small, smaller than our threshold, right? 0 0.05 is our, is our threshold, less than or equal to 0 0.05, right? So that tells us that it is significant. In this case, it's significantly high because that was what we calculated. We calculate whether 16 is significantly high. And sure enough, the probability is low, which means um, it is significantly high. All right, let's take a look at the second one. So for question B, we're trying to calculate whether, uh, whether eight is significantly low. Okay, so uh, we know that to determine whether eight is significantly low, 
uh, we're going to need to calculate the probability of 8 or less. So, so that is um, 8 or less, 8 to the left. So probability of 8 or less. All right, how do we know that? It just it is what it is, right? It's whenever we're trying to calculate whether something is significantly low, we calculate the probability of that number or less. Um, and again, refer to the table that I showed you earlier if you're confused. Okay, so um, so with 8 or less, in using binum CDF, we do not need to do the 1 minus because binum CDF can calculate the probability of a number or below, which is exactly what we want right here. So we're going to go to second vars, binum CDF. Number of trials is 22. Success, probability of success is 0.48. And uh, the X is 8 because uh, it's going to calculate the probability of 8 and below, right? So we're going to go down here and paste, enter, and that's our answer. So the answer is approximately 0.1901. Now, is this, significant, is, is this a low enough probability? Well, no, it's not, because it's greater than 0 0.05, which is our threshold, right? Anything lower than 0 0.05, uh, less than or equal to, rather, it's significant. But in this case, because the probability of 8 or less is pretty high, right, it's not low enough. So we say that it's not significant. All right, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. Uh, and th this better prepares you for the uh, homework. But as always, always reach out if you have any questions.